Hey YouTubers, <clears throat> Mike Martin's here, Mike Martin's channel. Just trying to set up my camera here so you can see me properly. I got this really, really good article that was sent to me by my friend Jasmine. And it's it's exactly what I talked about last week. And the article's a few days old already. I should have read it right after because it's almost like someone's watching these videos and then just making stories about them. Or I could see into the future, you know what I'm saying? Anyways, this goes back to, um, let, let me read the title for you. Opinion, why I'm fed up with baby boomers complaining about millennials. Millennials deal with a lot of garbage. But one of the worst things we have to contend with is the constant blittering of our way of life by the older generation. Why do you take pictures of everything you do? Actually, it's my job. You're throwing away money using that data on your cell phone. I needed to <coughs> I needed to do work, you know. That stuff about the pictures I mentioned. It's time to face the future and realize that for the most part how millennials do things is how we have to do things in the 21st century. Most of us work full time and probably have a side hustle too. Our lives are drastically different than those of other single income uh, predecessors. The entitled generation, and that's what I was talking. I don't know if you guys have the entitlement. I mean, I have like 10 videos on entitlement on this channel. With, with far fewer opportunities, I'm confused how baby boomers feel justified to call us the entitled generation. Sure, lots of us have helicopter parents watching out for us. And we probably lived at the, at the home just a little too long. But m maybe if that's because our chances of owning a house before we're 30 is almost zero so before you're 30 owning a home today is like it's it's you everyone's bought out of the market right and 10 years from now it's even going to be worse because the generation that was 10 years behind you know from my channel how trends in the housing market so before we were 30 and then they scratched it out and said almost zero so there's a zero chance what drives me insane about this whole thing isn't all all the us young people are struggling to make ends meet. It's that the older generation refuses to acknowledge how lucky they were and how crippling the economy, the economic reality is for those who are trying to make our way in the world today. It kind of reminds me of a Cheers song. You remember Cheers? Making the way in the world today takes everything you got. Taking a break from all your worries sure would help a lot. It's St. Patrick's Day today. Have a drink. Anyways, no one's denying the boomers had it, had it tough too. We get it. You had to eat, uh, uh, eat powered, uh, powdered milk and your own fruits so that you could, eat, you could eat it year-round. But you also owned a house when you were 20, benefited from the great pension plans, and enjoyed fantastic interest rates. Not to no, no, during the, boom, no, during the older, the interest rates were 12 14%. Ask your parents and grandparents, 12 to 14% back in the times. It wasn't good rates back then. Wages were low and interest rates were high. Not to mention you likely had the same job you didn't need data to keep for more than half of your life. So here's an idea, old timers. Maybe it's time to shut up. Not you, Grandpa. I would never speak to you that way. Just generally to your entire generation. After all, if you look at life today, millennials have a pretty tough time of it. Now, they're going into the price of university. Boomer. When I left home to go off to university, I had to work the whole summer to afford school and pay for my living expenses. Luckily, once I got my bachelor's degree, I was offered a high-paying job so I could stop living the student lifestyle. Me, says so millennial, okay? When I was in school, I had to work full-time during the summer and part-time year-round, and I have to live at home because I couldn't afford to pay for school and living expenses. Now that I have my bachelor's degree, I'm officially qualified to be a supervisor at Walmart's. Lucky me. Oh, and I have a five-digit debt. That's the housing. That's the, uh, sorry, that's the student loan thing. If you bought into that, a lot of people are struggling. Then it says, the ridiculously affordable housing. You see, it depends where you are. A lot of places, housing is still very affordable, right? Boomer age, 21. 
When we moved to our 2,500 square foot home, we had lawn chairs for furniture because that's all we could afford. It took a whopping 10 years to pay off our mortgage. Me, at age 25. When I started renting my 550 square foot apartment, I used my life savings to buy a couch. I can ever get a down I I can never get a down payment together to buy a condo. I'll be paying off my mortgage for 30 to 40 years unless of course the housing market crashes first in in which case I'll be moving back in with my parents and never leaving their basement again. So yeah, that that's true. That's very true because I I have a friend who did like really well at university has two degrees. And he and he's he's got two degrees. Like he's I've never well. There's people out there that have lots of education, and he lives in his parents' basement. And he's a janitor. It's sad, and he owes like ninety large in student loans. Getting paid to save. Boomer, I put everything in the bank to save for a rainy day. I earned so much interest off my investments that I ended up buying a boat without spending a dime of my own money. See, back in the time during the bull markets, were were were, were going nuts. And the, the, all the markets were just, going, were just going crazy back in the day. And the dividends were paying out well. People were doing well in the markets back in the day, you know. And um, unfortunately, um, now, you, the, the, your basic bank account used to pay you 4.5% interest. I still remember ING, I, 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 ING, Save Your Money. And then that orange commercial where they would say, I am offering 4.5% on your savings. So if you have a million dollars, that's $45,000 a year interest on a million dollars. Now a million dollars gets you maybe like 12, 1600 bucks a year in interest. So that's how bad it's gotten. Then me, now it says, the money I put in the bank actually depreciates in value. It's, it, is, it's still called savings if you put it somewhere and it disappears. Yeah, because everything goes up in price and then, yeah, it's, it's hard. Job security, boomer. I landed this great job. Now I'll be able to stay here for the rest of my life. Me. Can you please just retire so I could finally move up in the world these days? If you're not if you're not working in healthcare or tech industry or job mark uh, the job market is pretty flooded. With whom you ask? That be the boomers. Despite the older generation's financial security, many continue to work. The result is the bottleneck of career growth for the younger generation. That means that my climb up the career ladder is going to be a long drawn out process mind you a lot of jobs shut down in the late 80s early 90s i still remember all the factories closing down i still remember i still remember as a kid there used to be like these five avenues close to our house we used to bike ride up there it was like factory district all factories and it was packed with workers in the late 80s early 90s up into the mid 90s packed you see people getting off lunch going for lunch and just Tons of workers getting off. There was a honey factory. There was a candy factory. There was a, a paper factory. There was like, now they're all shut down. I drove by there like five, six, four, four years ago. It was all shut down. There was a huge paint factory, like a huge thing with gigantic smokestacks. I thought it was an oil refinery, but it was a paint company, like making paints. And that's all shut down. You know what I mean? So, you know, they shut that down and paved it over and opened a Home Depot. So you see where I'm going, there was a job at the Home Depot. What happened to working in the paint factory? You, you get where I'm going, right? So it's 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 tough. It's it is tough for the younger generation because a lot of the the, the the skilled trades, except if you're a plumber or a welder, and that's what I keep telling people: focus on skilled trades, plumbing, welding, electrician, uh, uh, you know, something like that actually requires a specialist to come in and do. So a metal metal work, robotics. There's lots, you know. Everyone likes to think they had a hard life and their personal strengths allow them to overcome obstacles. There's no doubt that boomers had their fair share of struggles. But this is seriously time to wake up and look at all the changes that have happened in over the last 50 years. So to anyone out there still giving the classic when I was your age speech, please stop and consider that when you were my age, it was very different world. We're both walking uphill both ways, pal. The only difference is I'm not having, I'm not doing it having a bump into every second person uh, starting at their smartphone. So, you know, it's a really good, um, really good article. I'll leave a link below, sent to me by my friend, Jasmine. 
Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna read this article. Um, article. I'm gonna read a comment here from this article. It's by BB49. It says maybe the issues the issue you're facing isn't with boomers commenting on your generation. Maybe if you look in the mirror and quit blaming others, you'll see what what the real problem is. Yeah, maybe you are facing the unpleasant task of a very expensive house in Vancouver, but no one is forcing you to live there. Did you know that there is there is life beyond hope? Also, cheaper houses, lower cost of living, much less traffic. That's me, baby. Merit. I love it. Oh, and when the last time any uh, anyone in your generation faced a mortgage increase from 10 to 18.5% 18 overnight, ding, ding, ding. That's what I commented early when we started reading this. 10 to 18.5%. Went from 10 to 8. It raised 8.5 points overnight. One more thing about your generation of millennials, many are okay. It's just the subgroup we call snowflakes that are the annoying ones. And then someone else, uh, Rory, uh, replies, almost all job growth in Canada is in the metropolitan regions of Toronto and Vancouver. Learn your facts, Richard. No, that's not true. Rory, it's not true, buddy. I'm here in Merritt. They're hiring in the mill. Every single job that you might have to work in Vancouver, like at Walmart or Home Depot and stuff, they're, they're, they're hiring here every place. Everywhere I go is help wanted, all shifts available. So the guy, this guy here, Rory, would probably be working at a Walmart, for example, in Vancouver, but he could still be working at a Walmart here. And like the guy said, less traffic, and he could actually, he could probably own his place with the, on his wage in, 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 in merit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so he says it's great in, great interest rates. Mortgage rates were 70, 17% in the early early 80s. It wasn't so great. True. And then somebody else, Wes Wright says, with fewer opportunities, I'm confused how baby boomers just f uh, feel justified to call us the entitled generation. Are you f freaking kidding me? I'm 55 now. I did not grow up with computers, etc. If anything, your generation has ample opportunities than mine. Stop whining and get to work. By the way, I learned computers in my 30s and do and do okay. I have read your rant and you are wrong on all counts. I will admit though that living in Vancouver is expensive. Look outside of there there and you if you spend your life saving on uh, savings on a couch, hmm. The future does not look good for you. Craigslist Kijiji, free sections are your friend. It's very true. This victim complex, this the, the victim complex in the piece is ridiculous. Sam is quick to point out all the different ways his life is tough, but doesn't even attempt to figure out why, why this may be occurring. You can't afford a house in Vancouver before you're 30 because you are effing uh, right for the sub, the sub sub par daily hive, and you'd rather complain about the fact that the choices you've made until now don't give you every luxury you think you are entitled to to the quality of writing in this piece shows me that you would actually be something very wrong in this world you were able to buy a house in vancouver so here's an idea old timers maybe it's time to shut up no sam it's time that you shut the f up and stop complaining about the fact that you're bad at your job and you're not overpaid so there's so many comments on here Comment below, guys. Let me know what you think. Um, but there's a lot of things that, that boomers went through, like bullying. Bullying was a big deal uh, back in the 80s and 90s. Bullying was harsh. People today don't go through that anymore. Like, they have safe zones. They have all this in favor of them, like helping them out, right? You know what I'm saying? Uh, back in the day, we didn't have that. Back in the day, when you wanted to go talk to a teacher that someone was picking on you, you're like, stand up to him. Punch him out, you know? That's the advice we got back when we were kids. You know, so I, I'm just telling you, like, there's a lot of things that were against uh, some of the older generations, you know, um, you know, very tough families. Like a lot of families you see nowadays are very easygoing. They let their kids grab a magic marker and write over, right all over the walls of the house and, and stuff like that. If I wrote a, a sentence on the wall, man, oh, my God, the trouble I'd be in with my dad. Holy smokes. But anyways, I, I, you know, I don't know what it is. I just... I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm just an old school, you know, I'm just an old fart and 
I liked the old way of doing things and and I appreciated the old way of doing things. And that was the generation I learned from firsthand. Anyways, guys, you know, like those those jobs in university, I never went to university or college. I didn't qualify. I, I was told at school I was a retard to go get a, this is what I was told by my guidance counselor, go get a job in a factory moving boxes around or learn to drive a forklift. So I got into transmission overhaul. I learned how to rebuild automatic transmissions for cars and I got really good at it. It's really good at it. And I owned my own shop, did really well. I mean, I did really well. So I thought outside of the whole academic section and went into the whole uh, hands-on um, specialized sec sector. Anyways, let me know what you guys think. Comment below.